welcome to Tea Time with Lorna. Now, how was my week? How was your week? This week was wild and crazy. I went out with friends, we had fun, went to the movies, saw some great movies. I actually ended up seeing um, The Greatest Showman and I loved it. I also saw Coco, two great movies I love. I recommend them. Anyway, we're here to talk about tea. Um, obviously my favorite subject in the whole world, well, second to acting, singing, dancing, and going to church. But I still love tea. So today I have a dear friend of mine, Gladys, who's going to join me and have tea with me. So Gladys is having tea with me and we're going to talk about some things that are going on in the world today. So Gladys, welcome to Tea Time with Lorna. Thank you, Lorna. Hi. So before we get started, what tea are you having today? So today I'm going to have some sleepy time. Okay. And I am going to have a ginger tea. I absolutely love the ginger teas. I know that they say it's good when you have a cold or things like that, but I just love ginger tea. So that's what I'm going to have as the chitter chat. So Gladys, tell me a little bit about yourself, even though I already know about yourself. So I am a special ed teacher and I also do ABA therapy part-time. Okay. I'm a single mom and I am also a tea drinker, <laughs> but I actually awesome. like, I prefer coffee. Uh -oh. Sorry. Don't say that too loud. <laughs> Please don't say that too loud. But anyway, there's your tea. Thank you. So, um, now one of the things we thought about talking about, and I really love it, I'm making money in two cups, is the Me Too movement that's going on. What do you think this is about? What do you think this is about? How do you feel about this? I feel like it's something that is definitely important to talk about. I think that it's something that definitely needs a voice. Um, but unfortunately, I also feel like because of just the media and all that kind of things, it kind of takes away from it a little bit because, you know, I feel like things need to more so be done versus just kind of talking about. And it's great that it seems like people are more open with being honest, coming forward with what's been going on with them. Um, but it's not just a Hollywood thing. And I think that's what's important to remember. It's not just something that's going on in Hollywood. It's something that's going on all over. And I just feel like, you know, more should be done as far as like sexual harassment and things of that nature. Okay. Do you know anyone who has been sexually harassed? At the, in the workplace? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I know many people who that has happened to. Okay. I, and it's actually happened to me before as well. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I didn't know that. And, and how did you handle that when it happened to you? So, it happened to me when I basically got, got my first job. And I was really young. So, I was kind of scared. But what I did was, you know, once I realized that it was inappropriate what was going on, it wasn't just like joking or it wasn't just like, you know, I was feeling uncomfortable. I spoke with a man. At first, I spoke with another co worker who I felt comfortable talking to. Okay. And then I spoke with the manager, and they took care of it for me right away. And what became of the person that was harassing you? Honestly, I'm really not sure. I'm not sure if that person got fired or if they just put them in another store. Okay. Um, but I didn't have to interact with that person anymore, which made me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, and I really appreciated the way the manager, you know, like, it worked swiftly. And I appreciated the way that my friend gave, even though he was young too, gave me the advice and the assurance like you know you need to talk to somebody about this you know give them you know whatever it is that you have to show that things are kind of being inappropriate and things like that and yeah okay excellent i don't want to change the subject but i'm enjoying this using these cups tell me where did you get this set from this is absolutely gorgeous well it was a gift from? actually okay. so from yes from my dad okay that's it? That's Just it. It was me. a gift from my father. Um, I really gorgeous. love it. I think it's super cute. Um, I'm not I'm not really the type to use a tea set, 
So I'm really happy that I actually have one. Yes. And now that you're here, I feel like maybe I might invest in another one. Uh, something you a little bit should. more. Something a little <laughs> bit more classic with maybe like bigger cups. It's okay. But I think this is super cute because it's um, all of this stuff is made in Japan. Okay. So it's like authentic. Uh, you know, it's that that vibe. You know what yeah. I mean? I think it's lovely. I absolutely love it. So. Yeah. Even though the cups are small, I've actually really enjoyed using them. And it's been on my list of things to buy, something like this. Um, I saw a couple of sets that I was going to purchase for the show, and I didn't end up getting it. But, but that's my error. I mean, I definitely am going to get something because I love these. I love these. Um, yeah. I'm glad that I got to use them. <laughs> this is actually my first time using them so thank you you're welcome for giving me that opportunity um so back to the you um the me too movement did you um when the hashtag came out did you do the hashtag or did you keep what happened to you from to yourself or did you share it with the exception of this guy did you share it with anyone else because you said you were young at the time right. what about your parents did you tell your parents did you tell anyone I really, I don't think I did. I don't remember if I did, but I don't think I did. Um, it's so embarrassing, and I feel like that's why this movement is so important, because it's something that you just don't even want to talk about, you know what I mean? Like, you just kind of act like, you want to act like it didn't happen, or whatever. And luckily for me, it wasn't something that was, like, physical, where a lot of, you know, people are coming forward where they've been, like, assaulted or raped and things of that nature which is like even worse and I can't even imagine, you know, being in that situation. Um, but I just remember kind of handling it at work and kind of just trying to like let it go. But I do remember like just being really scared like when I would leave, because I would work late, leaving, going to my car and stuff like that. So, you know. I have to say I had a situation myself also at a job with a manager when I first moved here from, from England and I was working in Manhattan and this manager uh, asked me out on a date and I said I was not interested and he kept harassing me and until he said if you don't go out with me I'm gonna fire you wow. and I didn't even know what to do because again I didn't want to get fired I didn't want to lose my job it was my first even my first or my second job in this country and I didn't I knew he was harassing me but I didn't know there was something called sexual harassment and I didn't know sexual harassment was illegal so I didn't know what to do and I didn't tell anyone at my job um, I actually agreed to go out with him because I didn't know what else to do I actually literally agreed I said okay I'll go out with you um, luckily for me I ended up um, walking away from the job before the date like two days before because I literally I didn't want to go out with him but I didn't know what else to do so for me my solution was eventually just to quit the job um, now that is not the solution for everyone because most people you know you have a job because you need the money I'm not saying I didn't need the money I'm saying I was confused and lost as to how to solve that problem so my solution at that point was just to walk away and just to find something else. So I'm also proud of those women who have come forward and 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 claimed the self righteousness back, claimed back some what was taken from them by those people who harassed them in whatever form it was. So I'm very proud of them, um, and I'm glad to be able to say, yeah, I was a me too person, um, but I've grown from that experience and I support women who are afraid to come forward and I hope that more come forward with their stories. I do as well because I, I feel like, you know, in order for this not to become a fad, for it to just become something that's just popular right now to talk about, you know, more women who are actually really going through these things do need to feel that, you know, comfortability to come forward about it because that's what's going to, and like, you know, laws and things like that need to be passed i feel like within the workplace they need to you know keep doing like these workshops and things like that about sexual harassment what is it because sometimes it can be really subtle and you don't realize it and honestly it goes both ways it could be a man or it could be a woman you know so we can't just you know pinpoint it on men all the time um you know but i feel like those are the things that we need to be doing rather than just talking about it because i know that you know 
especially like let's say in your case, you know, you just quit the job, but that didn't solve the problem because now yeah. maybe he might have done it to somebody else. That's he could have been doing it, you know, for who knows how long. That's true. Continue to do it for who knows how long. That's true. And it no longer was your problem, but you know, it could have been for somebody else. And I feel like, you know, that's why I guess more action needs to be taken and stuff like that so that this just doesn't become something that we're just talking about or people are just, you know, wearing black dresses on the red carpet about. It's like, that's great, but what else is being done? Well, know? I, well, I know that they have the, um, they set up a fund where women who want to pursue legal action can borrow from that fund um, and they can get money from that fund and that they use for to take it to court to pursue a legal ramification to whomever is arresting them. So that I know, and and the last I, I know it had some millions in the fund. I don't know how much, and I didn't follow the story through to know enough about that. But at least you know, with advertising and publicity, women will know, and also men who are harassed will know. You know what? It's not just me too. It's also here's money if you choose to go down that road, and you can get some satisfaction, some justice from whatever was stolen from you in whatever way. So yeah. I'm very proud of those people who've come up with those ideas. That's great. So amen. That, that's great to hear. Amen. Um, you know what else I wanted to talk to you about? I wanted to talk to you about, um, which is also a huge hot topic, what's going on, uh, the gun laws. Like, I don't understand. See, we don't have this issue in England. So, nobody has a gun, that's really the end of it. It's a very short conversation, like, uh, police don't have a gun, nobody has a gun, there you go. That's really the end of it. We don't have this, it's your right to bear arms. We don't have, I, I, I don't mean there's no guns in England. It's, it's, it's a rarity, let's put it that way, okay? Um, so, what is your opinion on the gun law? What should we do? Because I'm so tired of seeing children get killed. I'm so yes. tired. That's my opinion. I'm tired of seeing children get killed just because they went to school. Right. So the hot topic right now is should teachers be able to carry, you know, have guns in the classroom? Okay. And my opinion on that, being an educator and somebody who works with high school kids, okay. I just feel like absolutely not because... You know, I personally considered getting a gun permit, right? Okay. I know a lot of people who have one. Most of my family members do. Right. And, you know, I just felt like maybe, especially being a single mom, I should, you know, protect myself. And then when I really sat to think about it, I thought to myself, what would be my intent of getting a gun? My intent would be that I plan to kill somebody, basically. Because if something happened, let's say an intruder came into my home, what would I do? I would get the gun to do what? You know what I'm saying? Not, you, you know, depending on like where I might hit them or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's like, you plan to kill somebody. I mean, I just feel like that, that was my thought process. I don't know how it is for everybody else, but that was why I was just kind of like, you know what, maybe, maybe I shouldn't, you know? Because it's not for recreation or whatever. True. I was speaking with, you know, a couple colleagues the other day and, um, you know, just the topic of like, you know, hunting and things like that and how, you know, some people have mixed emotions about hunting. Like, is that really considered, should it be really considered a sport? You know what I mean? Like, because in that case, why do we need to have heavy artillery? You know, like these weapons that can like take down, you know what I mean? So it's a lot, but my, my opinion is I do believe that as Americans, that, you know, we do have the right to bear arms. Okay. And I don't believe that that is something that should be changed. Okay. But what I do think is the regulations on guns, the types of guns that people are able to buy, and most certainly the age at which you're, you're able to buy a gun. Okay. Because right now, I believe the age is 18. Okay. And for instance, if you can't buy an alcoholic beverage until you're 21, okay. you should not be able to buy a gun until you're 21 or, or older, in my opinion. Okay. I agree, but I will say this. People are allowed to join the army at 18. That means if you join the army at 18, they will train you to use a gun. So now you're in the army, you can use a gun. Now you come home, you can't use a gun. Then you go back after whatever, a year. Now you can use a gun again because you're only 20. Now you come home, you still can't use a gun. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I agree with you about changing the age limit, but then there is that. 
that to me is now a mixed message. Well, I think that if somebody is going to be in the military, and in all honesty, you know, I personally believe as well that maybe they should raise the age limit to be in the armed forces as well, maybe. Oh, well, that's a because, good idea. you know, at the end of the day, a lot of kids who go into the army, you know, kind of, you know, might might come from you know an impoverished area or something like that you know like they feel like that's their only option to go into the military to get help with school or whatever other things um and in the case that they didn't want to raise the age because of course they need people to enlist Correct. you know that maybe there will be an exception for those people who are trained because we're more i'm more so talking about civilians you know okay. what i mean like just the average joe who's 18 who doesn't have a background in the military, who, you know, doesn't otherwise necessarily need a gun besides for personal use, um, maybe you might want to consider that. And definitely, you know, doing background checks extensively, mental health assessments and things like that, because it seems to be a lot of people who, you know, are suffering from some other things who tend to be the mass shooters, you know, and I think that we need to kind of really take that seriously. But how would, how would we, how okay so i go into walmart to buy a gun and i believe right now you have to wait three days or five days or whatever it is you wait x amount of days then i i write my name i don't have a police record i don't have anything i have a gun how and when would you add mental health as part of the criteria to have a, like do i need a doctor's note i think it would <laughs> so my doctor be, has to sign yeah. off and say i'm not Basically, <laughs> like just kind of like how a lot of us have to get jobs. You have to go get drug testing. You have to do X, Y, Z. You have to get fingerprinted. Okay. You have to go see a psychiatrist. You know what I mean? Like somebody who's going to be able to at least for a bare minimum, you know, go okay. through your history. Because some people actually have a history. Some people don't. Some people do. Some people might have history of mental illness in their family, something okay. like that. So I feel like maybe something like that could be incorporated. I don't know. I mean, I'm just throwing things out there because at the end of the day, we're all looking for solutions. You know? Correct, correct, correct. Drink your tea. <laughs> you know, can I tell you, I actually love the idea of getting it signed off like by your doctor. Like, this is my doctor's note. I'm telling you, like, part of your physical, you know what I mean? I can get a gun now and I'm also 21. <laughs> woo woo. No, I actually, exactly. I actually like the idea. Um, but that now puts the responsibility on the doctor. The doctor so now, yeah. if someone does a mass shooting, are we all going to go to the doctor and say, excuse me, you said he was fine, and he just killed 7,000 people, or whatever the right. number is. I mean, at the end of saying? the day... That's kind of hard on one... That's one person. Yeah. And let's be honest, you could be fine today, right? You could be fine today and not have a mental illness today. Right. And... You see him today, you get your gun today, I don't know, next year you, you lose it and now you shoot the people. Yeah. Like, I mean, I really like the doctor's note, I really do. Maybe they should do annual checkups with that. I don't know, Maybe, I like it. But it's just, you know, it's just one of those things like, what can we do? You know what I mean? Like, how can we make the situation better. a little bit better? And being a mental health professional myself, in yes. a sense, you know, we see that. You know what I mean? Like, for the most part, and when even just watching the news, with a lot of these people who are, you know, the facilitators of these mass shootings, there's it seems like there's always something that either, you know, people missed or they just didn't know what to do about it or whatever the case may be, but there was always some kind of hint. Like, it wasn't, it's not usually it's not just, random. like, randomly. But don't you think that some of these people are just evil? Like, some of them, I it's do. not mental health. They're just evil. Like, they're just evil. Hannibal Lecter was just, <laughs> was just evil. I'm using him. You know? Right. He didn't kill mass shootings. But do you know what I mean? Like, I personally, my personal opinion is, I don't believe they're all mental health. No, I don't believe I don't they're, they're all mental, mental health. health. Um, I think they can cry mental health because that will help you if you're alive at the end right. of this with whatever the prison situation is. But I think a lot of them are just, they're just daggone evil people. And they're like, mm, I'm bored today, so I think I will go kill 20 people. Or maybe they don't have a number in mind. I don't know how it works. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I think the guy in um, Las Vegas, I don't think he was mental. I think he just, maybe he didn't like well, country music. Do, I don't yeah. know. I don't know, maybe he didn't like country music. And he, I don't know. That, I'm not trying to laugh about the subject. No, but no. I don't think he... And again, it's it's my opinion. I just think, because did they kill him in the end, or did, is he alive? I don't I remember. He's dead. 
Somebody killed him. Okay. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. Yeah. But I just feel like, you know, that much planning to me that says that you were of clear mind to go buy 17 guns. Right. Not shoot yourself, right? Get enough bullets because you've figured that out, right? Pack them in a bag of some sort or somehow you got them to wherever you needed to get them. So to me, that's all clarity. There's all clarity there. And then you knew that you were going to do it at 10 or whatever time you felt you were going to do it. To me, mental a, a person with mental health might be you went to sleep one day, maybe you shot everyone in the family, like because your mum said something that you didn't like. I can understand that because because to me that's not organized. That's not, that's not necessarily an, an organized activity, for want of a better word. I don't I don't know if that's even the right word. Do you know what I mean? I don't, maybe I think I'm wrong. That my opinion is kind of coming off of a recent visit that um, my class took to the state police. Okay. And you know, just talking with the state trooper and what he had to go through as far as his training and things like right. that to become a state trooper, mental health assessment was part of it. Oh. And I thought that was really like intriguing because it's like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, and when you think about it, there's not as many like cops who are doing certain things like that. That's all. I mean, there's a whole nother story on, you know, other issues with police and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I just thought that that was kind of interesting, you know, that in order to become you know, a, a, police, a state okay. police officer. They had to go through like this rigorous training and these all these different types of tests. I think police have to go through mental health as well. Yes. So I think that that, that is an excellent point um, that we need to advocate for mental health assessment prior to gun ownership. That sounds like a Facebook post right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Definitely something to talk about, right? And on a much, much lighter note. Thank you. <laughs> on a much, much lighter note. Um, since we talked about the Me Too uh, movement, and you know, we just had International Women's Day last week. Yes. Um, what is going on that? Uh, now we have all these women deciding they're going to breastfeed in public and just dropping, just dropping, dropping whatever they're wearing to breastfeed in public. <laughs> like, I'm not against it, but I'm like, uh, this is a restaurant, uh, maybe we should cover more, or I don't know. <laughs> what okay. is Go ahead. So I know as, this. Right? Like, as someone who personally breastfed, okay. um, I feel like it just shouldn't be such a big deal. Okay. I really don't. And I feel like, yeah. As a woman, maybe when you, if you have to do it in public, maybe you should put a little bit more effort to cover up a bit more because there are certainly all types of products out there and like, you know, like slings and different types of like clothing, all types of stuff that can help you to conceal what you're doing a little bit better. But in general, I just kind of feel like it's an American thing that we're just so like, oh my gosh, about it because you know, speaking with some colleagues, they're just like, you know, in other countries, it's not really that serious. It's kind of like, whatever, you know, like, you know, your baby's crying, you just, you know, it's, it's something to, like, feed your child at the end of the day. It's not something to, you know, it's not supposed to be something that's sexually explicit. And here, we're just, like, so crazy about any type of, which I feel like is ridiculous because we live in a sexually driven society. Okay. Everything, sex sells, right? Yes. So the advertisement on the side of the bus can be basically two nude people, right? <laughs> but you see a mom breastfeeding and it's like so taboo. It's I'm like, just like, lost their it minds. makes no sense <laughs> at all. But that's what's happening in our world. You know what I mean? Yes. But, you know, the funny thing is, I, I, I agree. If, if a mother needs to breastfeed, she should be able to breastfeed. She should not have to walk out of a restaurant and hide herself in the middle of nowhere so that nobody sees her left breast because her child is hungry. I agree. Um, but I, I, and so therefore, I don't feel that women have to cover up. I, we know what's going on. We all know that babies drink from their mother. This is not a secret. There should be no surprise. Most of us were breastfed. How do we suppose that happened? If her mother didn't do it, I mean, right. and then you gotta think too, like even like back in the days, not really even that super long ago. I mean, we didn't have all these different things. 
formulas and this and that. So it's just kind of like, what would happen if a mom was out and about and her baby was hungry? Exactly, exactly. But that's the same with buying those slings and things. We didn't have those 20 years ago. So what choice did mothers have other than to, you know, try their best with a button right. and a sleeve and <laughs> Just try not to jangle, <laughs> jangle the child when they're trying to eat, for goodness sake. You know, it's like those people who, who look at children funny when they cry in a restaurant. Right. We're all eating. This kid needs to eat also. <laughs> exactly. What would you have me do? Leave him in the, in the pram until he stops crying? Right. Like, yeah. So I think we're both in agreement there. Uh, we're okay with women breastfeeding in public, whether they have a sling, a sleeve, or a cover-up. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. But maybe because we have both been breastfeeding mothers, maybe that's why we feel that way. I don't know. I mean, is the people that are complaining, I'm curious to know, are they mostly men? Or are they mostly other women? What we spoke about the other day was the fact that it was like a male. Who, and there was like this big lawsuit about you know him basically becoming aroused over you know this and that's why it was so inappropriate and this and that and then it's just kind of like seriously like for one I feel like that's kind of gross because it's not a sexual nature type of thing it's so why didn't he remove himself exactly and that's the if other he thing. had an issue why keep watching like if it bothers you <laughs> look away I mean that's what we do right if we don't like something, we don't want to hear it, we don't want to see it, we don't want to smell it, walk away. Just walk away and just go on about your business, you know, but everybody has an opinion at the end of the day, you know. Well, I have to say, I completely agree. If it bothers you that much, walk away. Um, be, but remember that you had a mother and you might have a sister, you might have aunts and somehow they did it to their children and that's how we all got here. Well, that's how we all fed, and, it's and that's what we did. Yes. It's, it's more natural for your child, and it's absolutely healthier yes. for your child to drink breast milk than to drink formula. And you, you know, it's hard to pump and things like that yeah. sometimes, you know? So. Well, Gladys, thank you for being my guest on the show, thank sweetie. Thank you so much for thank having me. Thank you so much. I have really enjoyed having you. So, folks, that's all we have time for. I'm so sorry we couldn't continue this conversation um, because Gladys and I always have so much to talk about. Today it's breastfeeding and gun control. Next week it may be makeup and tiaras. Who knows? We always have so much to talk about when we get together. Actually, one of the things I do want to talk to her about is shoes because she always has fabulous shoes. But we didn't get to shoes today. And so, traveling. And traveling. Oh, gosh. oh my goodness. So definitely she's going to have to be a guest on the show another day. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to uh, Tea Time with Lorna. Uh, this show will also be on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube and you like it, please subscribe. Leave comments below. And hope to see you on the next show when I believe I'm having a dancer on. Finally, thanks a lot for tuning in. Bye. Bye.